Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. Recently, I did a video for you guys showing you how to sell your painted furniture online for a profit. And today I'm gonna show you how to invoice and charge clients for custom pieces that you create for them. So if you wanna learn how to charge and invoice people for commissioned work, just keep watching. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community that has thousands of courses for curious and creative people. They have classes on everything from marketing to photography, video production, branding, and various forms of art. Skillshare is a great resource for business owners and people looking to build a brand, but it's also a lot of fun for just people who are looking for a new hobby. I have a really been enjoying social media marketing, growing your followers with Kat Colette. Social media can be really overwhelming and she gives you some great tips to growing your following and growing your reach and specifically helped me a lot with hashtag research and how to target specific hashtags for your industry. If you're looking to build a furniture business, I think that one is gonna come in handy for you as well. I'm gonna leave a special link down in that description box to Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to click on that are gonna get two months free of a premium membership to Skillshare so you can start enjoying all the amazing classes that they have. If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher and you will normally find me on here making over pieces of furniture and showing you guys how I did it. About a month ago, I put a video up showing you guys how to price your pieces and sell them online just like I do. And I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing how I charge clients for custom pieces and you guys said yes, so I'm gonna do that for you today. If you haven't watched that first video, please go check that out. I'll link it down below in the description box and I'll link it up here. That's gonna give you information on how to price your pieces based on the materials that you use and the hours you put into your piece. And I'll refer to that a couple of times in this video. So go watch that one first and then come back and check this one out. The first thing I wanna do is talk about the pros and cons of doing commissioned work or client work. The pros are number one, you are guaranteed to get paid for your work. When someone hires you to work on a piece, you have the cost up front, you agree to the cost, and you know you're gonna get that money in your pocket. Sometimes when you're buying pieces or you find things at the thrift store and you're painting them and you price them, you don't know if you're necessarily gonna get all the work back out that you paid for that piece. You don't know how long it's gonna take to sell. So having commissioned work is more of a steady income and it is a guaranteed payment for your work. Number two, doing commissioned pieces is a great way to build your business. I have found that I have gotten the most word of mouth by specifically working with a customer, them having a great experience and loving their piece and sharing it with their friends or their friends coming over and seeing it in their house and asking about it. If someone buys a piece from you, um, they may love it, but I've found that they're more invested in it and more invested in sharing about me if they actually worked with me and hired me to create their vision and it turned out well, they're just more invested in the piece and they're more likely to share about your work. There are also some cons involved in doing client work. And number one is sometimes it is hard to achieve the look that the client wants. Most of the time when you're working with a client, they're gonna have an idea of what they want their piece to look like. They may have found a picture on Pinterest or they may have seen something on your website or in your Instagram. If it's something you created, it's probably gonna be pretty easy to recreate that look. But if they've found something that somebody else has done and you've never done that type of finish before, it can be a little challenging to figure out exactly what they want and make the right promises and make the right purchases to help them be happy with the product that you create. The second con, in my opinion, is doing client work can sometimes stifle your creativity. When you're pulling pieces from the thrift store or out of your house, it's a blank canvas and you can do whatever you want to it. When you're trying to achieve a look for a client, they might want something really plain and simple and just want you to stick to the basics. So it can sometimes be a little stifling for someone who likes to really express themselves through their furniture painting. And my last con is that not every work order or invoice 
that you send out is gonna turn into a job, which can be really frustrating because I can spend, you know, 30 minutes maybe chatting with someone about what they want, create the invoice for them, price everything out, and then send them the invoice and then never hear back from them or them pass thinking it's too expensive or for just a number of reasons. So you're putting all that work upfront into creating that invoice or work order and you may never get a job out of that. All that being said, doing commission work and client pieces is a great way to build your business and make money. So I'm gonna show you how I specifically do that today. Okay, so let's pretend that we have someone that just saw one of your pieces online. They think it's beautiful and they wanna hire you to paint a dresser for them. So they're gonna contact you and say, hey, how much would you charge for this? What you're gonna do then is ask for pictures of the piece. You're gonna ask for dimensions and you're gonna ask them to send you any inspiration or any color ideas that they have. I normally like to refer people to look at my Instagram or my website to see pieces that I've done in the past because I know I can recreate that look. But if they're looking for something else, if they have a photo that they found on Pinterest or something that another furniture painter or artist did, I'll accept those as well and let them know if I can get that look. So once I have all that information from them and they've decided what type of look they want, I'm gonna take my furniture pricing sheet and I'm gonna list out all my materials that I think I'll need for that project and then how long it's gonna take me to create that look and that's gonna give me a suggested price for that job. So once you have what you wanna charge them for your specific job, you're gonna actually create an invoice that you can email to them. I'm gonna be sharing a generic invoice that you guys can use. I originally based my invoice off of one that Allison from Refunk My Junk was gracious enough to share years and years ago when I first started painting, so I wanna make my invoice available to you guys. You'll just go in and customize all your information in there. So check out the description box for a download of that. If you have a company logo, you can put that at top or company name. If you don't, just put your name, your phone, your email, your Instagram or website so they'll know where to find you. I always put the date of the invoice and all the client information on there just so it's easy for me to contact them the next time I wanna pull up their work order. Let's go to the meat of the invoice and plug in all the work information and then I will tell you guys what all these notes and disclaimers mean on the invoice. So this is an old invoice that I used a few years back to invoice a client. I have just changed all their name and information so it, there's a little bit more privacy, but this was the actual job and what I actually charged for it. So I always put the date that the invoice is being created the color of the piece, the type of finish we're going for. Here I had light distressing, but this could be anywhere from smooth to rustic, um, really heavily distressed, just something that's going to indicate what the finish will be. And then I do an estimated completion date. This is up to you. I usually did mine about three weeks out in case anything happened with weather or any of my kids got sick. I like to give myself a lot of time to work on a piece, but still give them a deadline. So you can do anywhere, I think from two to three weeks is good. And then I put the item, so we just have a dresser here. And then in description, I really go into detail about how the finish is gonna be achieved. So here I described it will be hand-painted, distressed, and waxed with Annie Sloan chalk paint and graphite and black wax. So I'm just being really descriptive about the paint that I'm using, the color and the ceiling finish. And again, putting that it's gonna be hand painted in here versus being sprayed or something like that. Um, I have my paint and supply fee broken out into $40. This seems really low. I probably was undercharging for that, but you have your handy pricing sheet, so you will not undercharge for that. Um, labor I had broken out into eight hours at $25 in an hour, so that's gonna total 200. And then this client selected new hardware that we picked out for the piece. So I charged her um, specifically for that hardware. And I always put this note in my invoice just so that people know that the quote is for the front, top, and sides. And if you wish to have the back or the inside finish, like the drawers um, or the inside of a cabinet, that it would incur additional charge for materials and labor. But I also have a slot down here for sales tax, uh, delivery, 
or pickup fee if you want to add that. The total charge for this job was $290. And just for reference, this was a pretty small dresser. It was for a child's room. This invoice is in pages. It should open up in Word if you have Word. If you have a Mac and can use pages, it's going to total everything up for you. I went ahead and put sums in there, but when you open it in Word, those don't work. So you're just going to have to do all that stuff by hand just so you guys know. Okay, so let's get into all the notes. So when I'm doing client work, I like to take a 50% deposit it up front that covers my cost of paint and any hardware that I need to get. Once you have the piece, you're in pretty good shape that the client is going to pay your money to get it back and they're not going to stiff you because you have a piece of their furniture. But still, I think at least 50% deposit is fair up front asking for that. I also put that the remainder should be paid upon completion before they can pick it up and let them know that humidity and weather can delay drying times of paints and finishes so that the estimated completion date is just that. It's an estimate, again, setting your guidelines up front and making everything really clear and open and honest is going to set you up for a win when you're working with a client so that they don't have any surprises when problems or questions come up. Okay, and then down at the bottom, I have a couple of disclaimers because I like to share photos of my pieces that I work on either on YouTube or on my socials. So I just have them authorized that I can use their piece and talk about them in my socials. Um, if they don't want to authorize that, that's up to them. I, most of my clients have been happy to do that and happy to have their pieces shared on my social media. So this disclaimer over here is just me being a little bit extra just because of the <laughs> problems I've sometimes run into in the past with, again, expectations of the clients and the paints that I work with. So it's just saying when they sign this that they agree to the pricing above, they agree to the colors that you've talked about, they agree to pay their balance before they pick up their piece. But I also added this that I understand that chalk-like paint is meant to give character and brush strokes and imperfections may be present. It will not provide a smooth factory finish. Finishes are not guaranteed and I understand following the care guidelines will help my finish last longer. Again, this is just expectations. Mostly everybody that I have done work for loves their pieces. I've had a few people that are like, well, I can still see the wood or I can see a brush stroke here. I found that it helped to have this on my invoice just so there was an expectation that this isn't gonna look like something that you buy at a store. And that's a good thing because it's gonna look like a furniture artist did it. It's gonna be a one of a kind piece of work. So now that you know how to charge clients, my last thing that I wanna share with you guys is how to get the news out and how to capture people. And I think the best thing that you can do for your business is create a website. I've had a website from the very beginning. It was just a blog through Blogger and it's really easy to set up just a page a listing that you are open for client work and how people can contact you. And again, that they can send you a picture, dimensions and the finish they're looking for and then you can send them a custom quote. It's just really nice to have a landing page that they can go to. I even had information on my tab for services saying that there was gonna be a material fee for like $30 plus and then I put how much I charged per hour just so there was an expectation so people knew that before they were contacting me so that it wouldn't be wasting their time or my time. There's tons of information out there on how to start a website. A lot of hosting sites, you can get one for free or create a blog. But if you're not ready to do that step, you could always just create some type of tab on a Facebook page if you create a Facebook business. Um, or if you just have an Instagram, a good idea is to just do a story where you talk about that you accept client work. You can talk about how much you charge. You can show some of your before and afters and then save those stories in a highlight in your Instagram page. And as your client work grows and grows, make sure that you keep sharing it to show people how much people love your service. So post those before and after pictures of projects that you've done. Always capture a quote from a happy and satisfied client that you can share on your socials or on your website. You will be really surprised about how one client job will turn into multiple jobs. Most of the clients that I've worked with, I've done multiple pieces for, and then I've gotten at least two referrals from them for other people, and then I do at least two pieces for those clients, so it can really grow exponentially. And as tempting as it is to just take any job that comes your way, be choosy, be specific. If someone is wanting something that you've never done before or that you don't feel comfortable doing, 
don't take that job, you guys. It's just gonna be a lot of stress on yourself. Really figure out who you are, what you do well, and that's what you can sell to clients. I hope this gives you more confidence to tackle those client jobs. They are a great way to build your furniture painting business. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know what topics you want me to cover down in the comment section. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.